It seems like every photographer on YouTube is doing like a 2022 image review video this week um, because it's obviously the last week of 2022 and it makes sense. Now I would normally jump on that bandwagon except that would require me sitting in a studio and just talking about some pictures I took all year long. And uh, yeah, that's boring. So I thought to replace an image review for 2022, I would do this. Come out here, take some pictures, go through that other roll of instant film or the other pack of instant film that I have and uh, talk about some, some photos that I captured over the past couple weeks that I didn't really film a very good video on. Mainly because in one case, the situation did not lend itself well. And in the other case, oh my goodness, I don't know if I can take this picture. I went up onto the mountain, took some pictures up in the snow and I broke my filming, my film tripod, not this one, my film tripod. So the whole video kind of fell apart. And I tried a GoPro strapped to my chest and filmed some stuff up there. I'll roll in some footage while I'm talking about the photos, but man, it just did not turn out very well, uh, in my personal opinion. Um, this is going to be tricky. F22 at 1 500th. Um, I guess we'll try it. 3200 ISO uh, instant pull apart film. not the same to work with so I'm focused in dark slide is out I'm gonna take this picture and kind of just see what happens now it's only about 50 some degrees so I'll wait like 30 seconds how about that Forty-five seconds. That's what we're gonna do. That's actually pretty cool. It's not bad. I like the texture. So I was smart this time and brought a little envelope so I can stick the frames in there. And I also brought little trash bag. Oh boy. All right, so it was just getting a little too crowded over there for me. Lots of people out for a walk because we're having unusually warm weather after an unusually cold weekend. Um, but I'm framed up with another composition kind of tucked away by a pond. There's this fallen log in the water that's really creating some, some nice shapes. What I want to try to do is a long exposure using FP3200B film. Don't know if it's gonna work. I have no idea what the reciprocity failure is on this. Um, I heard somewhere that uh, it's something like 1.3 times whatever it is after a minute or something like that. I don't remember the math equation. I'll put it on the screen. Uh, Nick Carver talked about it in a recent video. Uh, but I'm just gonna throw on a polarizer, meter this up, and just kind of see what I'm dealing with as far as uh, time goes. The first photo I want to talk about uh, in our 2022 image review is of my first time shooting with Kodak Ektar. I went up, up in the mountains. This is where I broke my tripod, like I mentioned earlier. Went up into the mountains, thought, oh, this is going to be a super challenging and interesting photo shoot. Is my head cut off? I feel like it is. Uh, a challenging photo, challenging situation up on a mountain. And yeah, it was definitely that. With my tripod broken, I had no choice but to use a GoPro that I brought just to film while I was driving. I took a picture of the ski lodge up on top of the mountain. And I was quite happy with how it turned out. All right, with that polarizer on, I can actually see through the water, the log under there, which is exactly what I want. So when I took the shot, I was in, the, in a parking lot, lots of people all around, skiers going around. Anyway, I had to move quickly, 
had to really think about, you know, composition and framing. And I even caught a little skier, you know, as he's going down the hill. And that's what I thought really made the shot was the little bit of a human element in there. And that's those little, those little features that uh, you maybe don't notice in the first time. That's where I think that photography has so much depth to it, especially uh, the type of stuff that I was shooting up there. So I was super happy with how that one turned out. Looking forward to doing more um, kind of architectural style stuff, especially with film. Um, Kodak Ektar is very colorful. I was very, very surprised how vibrant it looked. So at f22, I'm looking at 1 2 50th um, with my polarizer on, which drops it a third stop. I would want to open it up a third stop and basically, because it's darkening in a hole, uh -huh, one, two, three, four, five, six stops would be a quarter of a second or a fourth of a second, sorry. One fourth of a second um, would be a, a six stop ND filter. All the filters, throw a six stop on there. Because I'm not at a second, I shouldn't be hitting rep reciprocity failure. Who knows? Okay, here we go. Picture number two was on the same mountain. I just basically spun around and pointed it towards the top of the ski hill. I think it's called Schaefer Butte. Might be Moore's Mountain, not 100% sure. It is a beautiful uh, uh, hillside with a couple towers, radio towers, I think. and. Uh, yeah, I just really like the, the shot, the, the, how it framed up, and how all these little skiers are going down. You can see everybody enjoying the afternoon. It was a very busy weekend, so lots of people up there. And, uh, and the final photo I want to show is basically of the hills out off in the distance. Uh, I used a, um, a graduated ND filter, first time doing a filter on my film, and uh, yeah, Got kind of a fun shot of the, of what we call uh, Emmett Butte, which is way out in the distance there. And I like this photo so much that it wound up on my, uh, on my website. So, uh, cool, cool stuff. All right, here we go. Picture number two. It's not bad. It's a little dark. I did, ex I did let it go for six or for a minute. So maybe that's it. I don't see enough detail, so I'm going to take another shot, same thing. This time we're going to go um, kind of a, a little more open. That's better, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, I like this photo much better even with the banding, which just like the last time, it's pretty bad, but you know, that's an interesting style to it. 3200 ISO film, it's pretty grainy. All I've done is pivoted kind of in a 180 because this frozen water is making a perfect S in my frame. And, and while you don't see the full S because it's you know, a 250 lens, you've got this beautiful shape happening on the ice that I just love. What makes it even better is there's this little bit of blue sky peeking out right, right there. Not that you'll see it because I'm shooting black and white. But I'm gonna meter up and take this shot while the water's mildly calm. As soon as it ripples, it kind of throws things off. My sky is 15.2, which I'm okay if that's, you know, almost entirely overexposed. The clouds are 14, so that'll be good. Water's there. I'm gonna do that. We're looking at, let's go there. So we're F something, whatever's between F16 and F22. 
F22, right between at one four hundredth. Dark slide out. Seems like a minute is a good time to, to develop this. But while we're waiting for that, we shall talk about the next group of photos that I want to share with you. And those are with Cinestill 800T. My first time shooting Cinestill, and I did it twice in a row. Basically, I went out, scouted a location in the middle of downtown. And this is the middle of downtown in a snowstorm. I went out there to take pictures with my Pentax 6x7 800T. Took some, what I think are some of my coolest photos of some of the businesses and their neon signs and the snowstorm. And then the next morning at like 4.30 in the morning, I went out before, before work. It was pitch black, nothing, no one but me and the delivery guys, and it was foggy outside. What a perfect opportunity for more Cinestill, right? So we go out, or I go out by myself. I got my, I got nothing but a GoPro on the first, on the evening, and then I have a, uh, nothing but my cell phone. So no, no video, really, because conditions were so challenging. Um, I never shot in anything like that, but it was so much fun and honestly such a cool experience. Wow, this is horribly overexposed. You don't see any detail at all. No, this looks... I kind of see the negative. Man, that's, that's not good. Um, I didn't think my metering was that bad. Overexposed. It must have dropped temperature. One minute. Gosh. What's this, number four? I like this shot enough. Yeah, it almost looks like it didn't capture things properly because there's like a dark spot where it developed and then all the edges didn't seem like they developed right so got a couple ducks in there that's fine you know I don't think those are ducks okay this time around I went 1 2 50th at f22 and we're going to develop, instead of 60 seconds, we're going to develop like a minute and a half because the temperature just dropped. Anyway, so Cinestill 800T, really fun stuff to work with. Um, man, it's, it's what I would call hipster film because <laughs> it has a distinct style. And that style is very bloomy. It's the lights are very halated. There's a lot of halation to the lights. Got the halo effect going. Um, and I got the grain. So I felt super hipster making those exposures. Yeah, uh, I mean, anybody who hasn't tried it yet, definitely give it a shot. Like I said, it's a lot of fun to work with. Gosh, it's still overexposed. Well, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking it's the film. It's old. I'm not going to waste another frame. All right. Now we're a bit too dark. Uh, I did stick around and take a few more photos of this ice. I like it. You see some lot of texture in the clouds. Um, I actually like it quite a bit because it's kind of dark and almost mysterious looking. Um, confession time. I kind of <laughs> exposed a few extra uh, negatives by accident. The, the little tabby thing that you pull out when you use the when you use this thing, it, it, it wasn't popping out, so I had to open it up for just a second to get it situated properly, which exposed a few films, but um, waste of $8, but we kind of had to. So, so we're going to end our image review here. 
you know, it's not, uh, not what I had planned to be doing, taking the same shot seven times in a row. But, like I said, situation kind of wasted a few, few negatives and, well, I don't know, just couldn't quite get it this time around. I don't know if it's the cold or situation, but there we are. Hoping you enjoyed my version of an image review instead of sitting at a desk and talking about a bunch of photos, um, taking you out, blasting through this other pack of instant film and going through, ah, I like that one. That one's much better. That's the shot. That's what I was envisioning. So, happy with that, even though it was like four or five frames wasted. We got it. We got it, and I like it. Um, okay, ending things out, finishing things up. Have a wonderful New Year celebration. Really enjoyed 2022. It was my most photographic year. And uh, yeah, looking forward to 2023 when I will hopefully be getting a lot more time with my, my Mamiya RZ67 Pro um, and doing a lot more digital photography too because I've been ignoring it and there's so much potential and there's so much you can do with digital photography, uh, especially with landscapes. And it doesn't cost nearly as much to take pictures <laughs> as it does with film. So thank you so much for a wonderful year. Uh, have a have a happy celebration, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.